All right, that's not the beginning. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, today is part two, the healing role of EMDR in the trauma of adoption. My name is Kim. I am a licensed clinical social worker, a certified alcohol and drug addiction counselor, and I am an EMDR certified therapist. We have learned that trauma is not just an event that took place sometime in the past. It is also the imprint left by that experience on the mind, brain, and body. EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It is a safe, effective, non-invasive, and powerful integrative therapy technique that does not involve medication or hypnosis and focuses on individual empowerment through the transformation of old traumatic memories to new positive associations of healing. EMDR therapy is designed to resolve unprocessed traumatic memories in the brain and has been successful in treating attachment trauma in adults and children. There we go. A trauma is an experience that causes one to develop erroneous beliefs about oneself or the world and to behave in ways that are not skillful. An infant or child separated from their birth mother will almost always or will almost certainly experience some level of trauma as they will perceive this event to be a dangerous situation. The sensations, sights, and sounds with which they were once familiar are gone and the mother is no longer available to soothe the child or help the child self-regulate. Since the only part of the brain that is fully developed at birth is the brain stem, which controls the sympathetic nervous system that generates the fight, flight, or freeze response, babies are unable to use parasympathetic abilities, such as self-soothing. When this happens at a very young age, it is encoded as implicit memory, just like any event that takes place before the development of language. The trauma that adoptees have experienced is significant because while the adoption of a child is a single event fixed in time with a beginning and an end, the impact is a far reaching process that continues through the adoptee's life. Often when something traumatic happens, it seems to get locked in the nervous system with the original picture, sounds, thoughts, feelings, etc. Since the experience is locked in, it continues to be triggered whenever a reminder comes up. It can be the basis for a lot of discomfort and sometimes a lot of negative emotions, such as fear and helplessness that we cannot seem to control. These really are the emotions connected with the old experience that are being triggered. The eye movements used in EMDR therapy sessions seem to unlock the nervous system and allow the brain to reprocess the experience. It is similar to what is thought to happen in rapid eye movement sleep. The bilateral stimulation in the eye movements may be involved in processing the unconscious material. For many adoptees, trauma occurred prior to the development of language that could explain the events experienced. Therefore, the memory is primarily somatic in nature and stored in the nervous system. While traumatic experiences are often able to be managed and resolved spontaneously or with talk therapy, sometimes they might need to be processed with EMDR therapy, which will move the trauma information from being dysfunctional to functional. EMDR therapy allows the cognitive and emotional parts of the brain to be online at the same time, which speeds up processing. Talk therapy may not work for everyone as it can take a person too deeply back into the trauma and this might create even more distress. EMDR was originally developed by American psychologist Francine Shapiro in the 1980s to alleviate distress associated with traumatic memories. Dr. Shapiro discovered that there was a connection between eye movement and the effect of persistent traumatic memories and hypothesized that eye movements would have a desensitizing effect on traumatic memories. 
EMDR therapy targets the unprocessed memory as well as the emotions, beliefs, and body sensations associated with it. Bilateral stimulation, eye movements, tapping, or tones activates the brain's information processing system, allowing the old memories to be digested or reprocessed and stored in an adaptive way, even if the person doesn't have an autobiographical account of the memory. EMDR targets the unprocessed memory at the same time as the emotions, beliefs about ourselves, and associated body sensations. Bilateral stimulation, left and right movements, generally eye movements or tapping, activates the brain information processing system, allowing the old memories to be desensitized and reprocessed. When distress from a disturbing event remains, the upsetting images, thoughts, and emotions may create an overwhelming feeling of being back in that moment or a perception of not being safe in the present. EMDR therapy helps the brain process these memories and allows normal healing to resume. <clears throat> if the EMDR therapy is successful, the experience can still be remembered, but the fight, flight, or freeze response from the original event is resolved. Many people describe it like they are trying to remember the feelings around the incident, but it feels distant, like it's behind them and they can no longer grasp it. And the triggers that once controlled their day-to-day -day lives have disappeared. There are eight phases of EMDR treatment. Phase one is history and treatment planning. Phase two is preparation. Phase three is assessment. Phase four is desensitization. Phase five is installation. Phase six, body scan. Phase seven, closure. And phase eight, reevaluation. In phase one, history and treatment planning, it generally takes one to two sessions at the beginning of EMDR therapy. And it can continue throughout the therapy experience, especially if new problems are revealed. In the first phase of EMDR treatment, the therapist takes a thorough history of the client and develops a treatment plan. This phase will include a discussion of the specific problem that has brought them into therapy and the behaviors and symptoms stemming from that problem. With this information, the therapist will develop a treatment plan that defines the specific targets on which to uh, use EMDR the event or events from the past that created the problem, the present situations that caused distress, and the key skills or behaviors that the client needs to learn for their future well-being. One of the unusual features of EMDR is that the person seeking treatment does not have to discuss any of the disturbing memories in detail. So while some individuals are comfortable or even prefer giving specifics, other people may present more of a general picture or outline. When the therapist asks, for example, what event do you remember that made you feel worthless and useless? The person might say, it was something my brother did to me. That is all the information the therapist needs to identify and target the event with EMDR. For most clients, the preparation phase will usually take between one to four sessions. In the second phase of EMDR treatment, the therapist will teach the client some specific techniques so that they can rapidly deal with any emotional disturbance that may arise. If the client can do that, they're generally able to proceed to the next phase. One of the primary goals of the preparation phase is to establish a relationship of trust between the client and the therapist. While the person does not have to go into great detail about their disturbing memories, if the EMDR client does not trust the therapist, the client may not accurately report what is felt and what changes they are or aren't experiencing during the eye movements. If the client just wants to please the therapist and says they feel better when they don't, no therapy in the world will resolve that client's trauma. During the preparation phase, the therapist will explain the theory of EMDR, how it is done, and what a person can expect during and after treatment. Finally, the therapist will teach clients a variety of relaxation techniques for calming themselves in the face of any emotional disturbance that might arise during or after a session. In any form of therapy, it is best to look at the therapist as a facilitator or guide who needs to hear of any hurt, need, or disappointments in order to help achieve the common goal. EMDR therapy is a great deal more than just eye movements, and the therapist needs to know when to employ any of the needed procedures to keep the processing going. People who experience optimal mental health have learned to implement adaptive ways of relaxing themselves and decompressing from life's inevitable and often unsuspected stress. 
One of the goals of EMDR therapy is to make sure that the clients can take care of themselves. In the assessment phase, the client will be prompted to access each target in a controlled and standardized way so it can be effectively processed. Processing does not mean talking about it. In the third phase of EMDR treatment, the therapist identifies different parts of the target to be processed. The first step is for the client to select a specific image or mental picture from the target event that best represents that memory. Then the client chooses a statement that expresses a negative self-belief associated with the event. Even if the client intellectually knows that that statement is false, it is important that they focus on it. These negative beliefs are actually verbalizations of the disturbing emotions that still exist. Common cognitive or common negative cognitions include statements such as, I am helpless, I am worthless, I am unlovable, I am dirty, I am bad, etc. The client then picks a positive self-statement that they would rather believe. This statement should incorporate an internal sense of control, such as, I am worthwhile, I am lovable. I am a good person, I am in control, or I can succeed. Sometimes when the primary emotion is fear, such as in the aftermath of a natural disaster, the negative cognition can be, I am in danger. And the positive cognition can be, I am safe now. I am in danger can be considered a negative cognition because the fear is inappropriate. It is locked in the nervous system, but the danger is actually passed. The positive cognition should reflect what is actually appropriate in the present. At this point, the EMDR therapist will ask the client to estimate how true a positive belief feels using the one to seven validity of cognition VOC scale. One equals completely false and seven equals completely true. It is important to give a score that reflects how the client feels, not thinks. We may logically know that something is wrong, but we are most driven by how it feels. Also during the assessment phase, the client identifies the negative emotions, fear, anger, and physical sensations, tightness in the stomach, cold hands, associated with the target. The client also rates the negative belief, but uses a different scale called the subjective units of disturbance scale, or SUDS. This scale rates the feeling from zero, no disturbance or neutral, to 10 being the worst, and is used to assess the disturbance that the client feels. The goal of EMDR treatment in the following phases is for the SUD scores of disturbance to decrease, while the VOC scores of positive belief increase. The desensitization phase focuses on the client's disturbing emotions and sensations as they are measured by the SUDS rating. The fourth phase of EMDR deals with all of the client's responses, including other memories, insights, and associations that may arise as the targeted event changes and its disturbing elements are resolved. This phase gives the opportunity to identify and resolve similar events that may have occurred and are associated with the target. During desensitization, the therapist leads the client in a set of eye movements, sounds or taps with appropriate shifts and changes of focus until the SUD scale levels are reduced to zero or one or two if this is more appropriate. Starting with the main target, the different associations to the memory are followed. The therapist will guide the client to a complete resolution of the target. The goal of the installation phase is to concentrate on and increase the strength of the positive belief that the client has identified to replace the original negative belief. For example, the client might begin with a mental image of being beaten up by their father and a negative belief of, I am powerless. During the desensitization phase, that client will have reprocessed the terror of that childhood event and fully realize that as an adult, they now have strength and choices that were not there when they were young. During this fifth phase of EMDR treatment, the positive cognition, I am now in control, will be strengthened and installed. How deeply the client believes the po uh, positive cognition to be is then measured using the validity of cognition scale. The goal is for the client to accept the full truth of their positive self-statement at a level of seven, which is completely true. 
After the positive cognition has been strengthened and installed, the therapist will implement the sixth phase of EMDR treatment and ask the person to do a body scan by bringing the original target event to mind and seeing if any residual tension is noticed in the body. If so, these physical sensations are then targeted for reprocessing. Evaluations of thousands of EMDR sessions indicate that there is a physical response to unresolved thoughts. This finding has been supported by independent studies of memory, indicating that when a person is negatively affected by trauma, information about the traumatic event is stored in the body memory rather than narrative memory and retains the negative emotions and physical sensations of the original event. When that information is processed, however, it can then move to narrative memory and the body sensations and negative feelings associated with it disappear. An EMDR session is not considered successful until the client can bring up the original target without feeling any body tension. Positive self-beliefs are important, but they have to be believed on more than just an intellectual level. Phase seven is closure, and this ends every treatment session. Closure ensures that the client leaves at the end of each EMDR session feeling better than at the beginning. If the processing of the traumatic uh, target event is not completed in a single session, the therapist will assist the client in using a variety of self-calming techniques in order to regain a sense of equilibrium. Throughout the EMDR session, the client has been in control. For instance, the client is instructed that it is okay to raise a hand in the stop gesture at any time, and it is important that the client continue to feel in control outside the therapist's office. The client is also briefed on what to expect between sessions. Some processing may continue, some new material may arise. Um, the client is also instructed how to use a journal to record these experiences and what calming techniques could be used to self-soothe in the client's life outside of the therapy session. Phase eight is reevaluation, and this opens every new EMDR session. This phase involves reevaluating the target with a SUDS check. As with any form of good therapy, the reevaluation phase is vital in order to determine the success of treatment over time. Although clients may feel relief almost immediately with EMDR, it is as important to complete the eight phases of treatment as it is to complete an entire course of treatment with antibiotics. So to summarize, EMDR therapy involves the client and therapist working together to identify target memories and current triggers that are causing suffering and or interfering with daily life. The targets are the starting points of the session and a point of reference to trace the memory back in time. Using bilateral stimulation, EMDR helps integrate the early memories, body sensations, emotions, and negative beliefs the person has. Over a series of sessions, symptoms are reduced and beliefs associated with the memories or experience are shifted to a more positive and adaptive state. Rather than the belief, I'm not lovable, the client will be able to recognize and have a, uh, a felt sense of worth despite what happened in the past. It is important for therapists to combine various EMDR protocols, guided imagery, mindfulness practices, and visualization to create calm states and nurturing figures in the present to help heal the wounds of the past. I am confident to recommend EMDR therapy to adoptees, as well as anyone who has experienced past trauma that is affecting them in present day. This concludes Part two, the healing role of EMDR and the trauma of adoption. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna try to stop record. <laughs> Where is it? There it is.